Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look at fluorescent starters. Uh, here's a typical example. And I had a look at these in the previous video in terms of how they are wired into the actual fitting. And if you haven't seen that video then links are in the description and so on. And uh, this time we'll just have a look at the uh, starter itself and uh, see if we can get this to work and uh, actually see how it operates when it's powered. And for this we've got a very uh, simple setup here. So let's have a look at that. So here's the uh, actual starter, this fairly typical one, rated 4 to 80 watts. That's probably the most common type. And uh, in order to actually test this, we can't just simply connect this across the mains, because as we saw in the previous video, inside here is essentially a tube which contains basically a switch. So if we just shove this on the mains, when the switch closed, it would actually short out the supply and therefore blow the fuse. So of course that's not very useful. So what we've got here then is uh, just a normal plug here for the mains and this uh, lead here. And the other end of that is just connected to this normal uh, lamp here, or lamp uh, holder if you like. And in the top here we've got a selection of uh, different lamps or light bulbs which we can put in there. And in the middle here I've just uh, cut the uh, brown wire here. I see the blue and uh, earth just go straight through. But I've actually cut that and then put the uh, starter holder here in series with that. So we've uh, basically got a path of current from the uh, pin of the plug here, through the wire, through the starter, through the uh, lamp or whatever wattage we've put in there, and then returning via the neutral to the supply there. So this will limit the current that goes through the starter. So even when it uh, closes and the thing is basically shorted out, it's still going to be the uh, basic current for whatever lamp we've installed. Now the starter we have is this one, which we saw in the previous video, it's that uh, 70 watt thing. Um, that is a bit blackened in the side as it's been used uh, for obviously quite a long time. And it did have a little capacitor, which was this one, just stuck across the terminals as well, just for a bit of uh, interference suppression to cover when the contact opens. So we'll try that one. And we've also got this one, which is uh, basically one of these, which is the uh, 4 to 80 watt variety, probably the most common. Pretty much the same deal inside, and again that also had a little capacitor which was just across the terminals like that. Now these two are pretty much identical, uh, very little difference, but bearing in mind this is uh, a slightly lower rating than this one. In theory the only real difference between the ratings is the uh, quantity of gas inside, so in other words whatever current goes through this is therefore uh, selected so that the gas inside heats up at a reasonable rate, so if the current was too low the gas inside would hardly heat up at all and the contacts wouldn't heat up and would never close. And if the current was too high for it, then it would heat up far too quickly and the contacts would close pretty much instantly and uh, therefore wouldn't do either. So it's uh, presumably going to be some sort of measure of how much uh, current is permitted to pass through these. But as you can see on the cover of the uh, that one, that's supposed to be a 70 and uh, these are supposed to be a 4 to 80, so they're both pretty much in the same range. So not really surprising that they look pretty much identical. So what we've got here then is the little uh, starter tube there, obviously remove the outer casing. And uh, we'll try this uh, lamp here for starters, that's actually a 25 watt, so uh, it should limit the current to that kind of value. And uh, just put the whiteboard in the background here so we can see it a bit more clearly. So uh, when we power it what we should see is that the uh, gas inside will glow, the switch will close and then the light will come on, and then of course the gas will cool and the light will go off. So should see that sort of switching on and off. So let's try this uh, for a start. So as you saw there that it uh, glowed to start with and then the contacts closed and then the light came on obviously it cooled and then switched on and off so it was sort of basically oscillated in that uh, rather undesirable fashion. So that's uh, a reasonable start. Now uh, Let's just try it again with this one. This thing is uh, supposedly an 8 watt, so uh, considerably less than that uh, 25 thing we just tried. So again we'll try that uh, plugging in. Now you see that it's actually glowing, but the lamp is eventually getting to start, so of course the lower current flows through, it takes longer for this thing to actually heat up. But uh, once we've got to some sort of equilibrium of temperature, then as you see as before it's sort of flicking on and off in a annoying fashion. So uh, again we'll uh, just disconnect there. And then finally we've got this one here which is a uh, 4 watt LED, so again half the power again of what we had previously. So uh, once again we'll uh, see what happens there. 
Now this time you see it's not really doing anything at all. There is a slight purple glow here on the uh, actual uh, neon or bulb there. It's very difficult to see on the camera. But uh, obviously the current for this is far too low for the thing to actually heat up enough to strike. So that obviously is not going to work. And if we just remove this and put it back in, we may be able to get a bit of a pulse in there. So yeah, just as I plugged it in, that sort of initial boost of current, but uh, of course dies away quickly, probably due to a capacitor or something inside this particular lamp. Now here I've turned the lighting down considerably, though it doesn't show it on the camera, so I've adjusted that to compensate. So this is with the 4 watt LED there, where we've got just that slight glow. So we'll just uh, plug in. So you see there was that initial pulse, which uh, probably due to a capacitor in the uh, lamp charging. And then after that we've got a very small glow there, but clearly that's not enough to actually energise the thing and cause the contacts to close. So essentially it would just sit there forever not doing anything. And this is a situation you might get if you had a starter of an incorrect rating. So you had a high rated starter, say over a 100 watt tube of the old uh, T12 8 foot ones. So 100 watt starter, I knew somewhere I stuck it on a little tiny tube, say we're only rated for sort of 18 watts or something. So that's just pretty much going to sit there forever. Now I'll take out the uh, lamp there and of course it will uh, go off. And then we'll try that 8 watt lamp that we saw before. So put that in. And you see that's uh, flickering away quite well there, obviously considerably brighter. And now it's actually trying to start the lamp, and now it's in that sort of oscillating cycle where the uh, light is basically switching on and off, and the uh, tube is obviously disconnecting and connecting inside there. And the contact point is actually at the top uh, right there where the angled piece goes across, so uh, it's sort of just connecting and then disconnecting like that. So that's uh, rather annoying. And then finally the uh, other lamp there, which was the 25 watt uh, incandescent variety. And again, that's pretty much the same thing, although it again charges up and uh, oscillates at a much higher frequency. And again, that's mainly because the uh, power is obviously greater going through, so the heating effect inside is considerably increased. Now this is the other starter, this is the 4 to 80 watt variety, and it's a bit easy to see in this one the arrangement of the two electrodes. So on the left there I've got that tall one, and then they've got the uh, curved strip there, which is the one that heats up and expands, and a little uh, contact point there at the bottom. So we'll do the same as before, so we'll start off with that uh, 4 watt uh, LED, so uh, put that in there. And again that's pretty much what we saw previously, it's just that uh, slight amount of glowing there. Again, it's not really enough to get the uh, lamp to illuminate, and again the uh, strip isn't really heating up so it's not closing the contact there, so all you get is that sort of bluish coloured glow around the electrodes. Now this is the 8 watt uh, lamp there, and again we're getting that uh, initial glow and then it's basically flickering away there as the lamp uh, turns on and off. And then of course finally that 25 watt uh, incandescent, which uh, should do uh, even worse. So again, it's pretty much light straight away. And again, it's just sort of flickering away there, sort of rapidly opening and closing the contact, and probably causing lots of interference as well as the capacitor has been removed. So that's uh, fluorescent starters. And if you put the wrong one in, nothing really bad is going to happen, but in many cases it won't actually be able to start the tube because the current that flows through the ballast obviously does need to be matched reasonably well to the starter. And if insufficient current flows, as we saw there, then the thing won't actually close the contacts and therefore the tube will never start. So anyway, the uh, typical starter is this one, that's sort of 4 to 80 watts, and that pretty much covers all the tubes in common use. Uh, it doesn't cover the uh, 8 foot ones because they were either 100 or 125 watts. But uh, given that they're not even manufactured anymore, so uh, you're not going to be fitting many of those anyhow. But uh, certainly for most of the ones up to the uh, six foot length, that is the uh, fairly typical starter to use. And it's by far the most common one available. This one was uh, 22 pence, so uh, hardly an expensive item to purchase. So until next time, thanks for watching.